Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Power Urus. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up the box and see what we got. Okay, when you first open it up, looks like a big piece of styrofoam right on top, which has holes for the terminal bolts and a big hole in the center. Let's see, we have a small user's manual right here and then the battery. Okay, right off the bat, my first impressions are uh, it looks nice. It does give you uh, plenty of information right on the front of the battery. It says that the charging voltage is 14.6. That is typical for a uh, 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. Your charging current is 50 amps. Your discharging current is 100 amps. I'm guessing those are maximums. And then your maximum discharge current is 200 amps for five seconds. So you can do 100 amps continuous and 200 amps for five seconds. And we will be testing that a little bit later on in the video. Um, it does say that the nominal voltage is 12.8 right here on the battery and that it's 100 amp hours. Um, it says that store at 75% capacity and recharge the battery periodically. Now, who knows what periodically means, but I believe that they say you should usually charge it up around every six months. Let's see. And the back of the battery is exactly like the front of the battery, so we have no idea if this is the back or the front. And if here are the uh, post bolts. They are on the battery when you get when they come shipped. They are M8 bolts, and they look a little short. Um, they only look like they might be, I don't know, maybe 12, 12 millimeter, 12 millimeters in length. I wish they made, I wish they, they gave a 16 millimeter uh, length bolts. That would be nicer. That way you could put, you could wire up multiple items on here instead of having to use a bus bar. The first thing that I noticed is that this strap, you know, it, it comes with a nylon strap, but the strap goes all the way around the battery, which, which I find kind of odd because, uh, you know, it, it does stuff like this all of a sudden. And then while the strap is on the bottom, you know, look, I mean, the battery actually will shake. So you have to take this strap off in order to put it in an environment, you know, if like in an RV or something like that, you would definitely want to remove this strap altogether, which can be easily done just by, just by pulling it off. And there you go. And after putting the strap back on, I mean, I guess you could like just move the strap like this and have it, have it like that. But I don't know how, I don't know how secure that is really. I mean, I guess it could be fine, but I don't know. I just think this whole strap, the whole uniform uni, uni, uni strap, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really like it. So that's just my opinion. Okay, so the first thing you should do when you get your battery is test the voltage of the battery to make sure that, well, that it works and that it should be around 13.1 volts to 13.2 volts. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, and our voltage is 13.05 volts. So that's a little bit lower than I would like. Now, with the voltage being a little bit lower than I would have expected, I would have expected at least 13.1. With this battery, I would make sure to do a capacity test to, just to make sure that everything is squared away. So we're gonna go ahead and charge this up and then do a capacity test. Okay, the capacity test is complete, so let's go ahead and check it out. And what we have is 103.56 amp hours of capacity for this 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery by Power Eurus. So we're gonna go ahead and charge it back up and do some high amperage testing. Okay, so throughout the day, I've gone ahead and uh, started recharging this battery back up from that discharge test to find the capacity. Um, I charged it up to about, uh, I, charged, I put about 45 amp hours into it. And you know what, I was like, you know what, I, I wanna know what happens if you push it over its uh, 
charging current of 50 amps. Because what I have here is a 75 amp uh, charger. So I kind of wanted to see what would happen if I went ahead and just threw 75 amps of charge in there. Would the BMS in the battery shut off or would it, um, would it just charge it up? So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. All right, I hope you can see that, but we are putting about 70, almost 76 amps into this battery right now. Okay, I've been charging this thing at 75 to 76 amps for at least seven or eight minutes now, <clears throat> and it doesn't care. Uh, that 50 amp max, that's probably highly recommended, but the BMS will not stop you from uh, charging it faster. So I'm just gonna let it go. I mean, if it burns up, it burns up, but it's cool to the touch. Everything about it is cool to the touch, so I don't, I don't feel concerned. I do wanna tell you about the physicality of this battery. When it comes to the width, it is 13 inches long, it's 6.8 inches deep, and it's 8.46 inches in height. And it comes in at 27 and a half pounds. In the manual, it also says that you can do up to four in series for a 48 volt battery, but it says to only do two in parallel. I thought that was very strange. Also with this battery, it is Bluetooth compatible, so I went ahead and downloaded the app and I'm gonna go ahead and open it up right now. If you do a search on uh, the Play Store for Android for uh, Power Urus, nothing really comes up. So I actually had to go to the PowerUrus.com website and look under uh, support. And from there, you can see the link to where to download it. And the app is actually called Rory Pow Fish. I would have never guessed that in a billion years. Okay, but I got it opened up and I first had to click on the Bluetooth icon to see if I could find the battery. And the battery, I believe, is this S12100A, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Please enter the device number. Okay, and I entered, there's a, a number on the top of the battery, right next to the model number that you have to enter. And now it looks like everything is popping up. Uh, let me just show it you on the screen here. Um, because some reason my phone, when I do a video capture, it doesn't time it right. So let me just show you here. Looks like we're at 69% capacity. Uh, the charging MOSFETs and the discharging MOSFETs are on. Uh, it has a Wi-Fi button, but that says off. I'm not sure what that does. It shows our minimum voltage and our maximum voltage ranges for each cell. The cell difference, which is nice, and it shows uh, the temperatures inside. And then it shows each individual cell uh, in the pack. Uh, at the top, it does show that the total voltage is 13.8 volts. The current right now is 73.1, which I have 75.4 on my amp clamp, but that's pretty close. Remaining charge time is 25 minutes, so that's kind of neat that they calculate that out. There's also a remaining discharge time in there, so that's nice. And it does have a state of charge indicator at the top, which is at 70%. There is a more button right here. Uh, we have user mode. And it's asking for a verification code. We're not gonna do that. Uh, the language, let's see, a data log, a device binding, and then about. So the app does tell you the basic information about the battery, which is always nice. And honestly, I can't really think of anything else in the app that I'd really want to know. So leave it in the comments if you, if you have other things that you would like to know about the battery that should, be show, that should be showing up in the app. Okay, now we've come to my favorite part of the testing, and that is the high amperage testing. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push about 110 amps through the battery just to make sure that it can handle that for about five minutes. Wow, I forgot my timer. There we go, that's better. Uh, we're gonna set it for about five minutes. We're gonna let it run just to make sure that it can do about 111, 110 amps for five minutes. And then what we'll do is we'll do like 220 amps by adding a little griddler to the setup. 
and we'll see how long it can handle that. Now, in the documentation, it says that it can run 200 amps for five seconds. So we'll be testing that. And then I'm going to put it onto my ShopSmith because that thing can pull 400 amps. And we'll try to see if it can start up my ShopSmith. So let's go ahead and start up this induction cooktop and run it for five minutes. Okay, I just wanted to show you that right now we are actually pulling 114 amps out of this battery. It's been one minute. Let's see what the app says. Total current, 110 amps. Right there. Okay, well, it's been over five minutes and this thing is still pumping out 114 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off and we'll give it like five minutes to rest. And then we're gonna go ahead and try to push about 220 amps to see how long it will push that. Okay, I've given this thing some time to rest and now we are jumping into the 220 amp high amperage test. Uh, what I have is a griddler and my induction cooktop. I'll be turning on the induction cooktop first, get, get it up to that 110, 115 amp draw, and then I will turn the griddler on full blast and hopefully it will shut off in five to 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and start it. Started the induction cooktop. Go ahead and hit start there. Our amperage is now up to 114 amps. So let's go ahead and click this on at 15 seconds. There we go. It's up to 241 amps. Still 241 amps. Uh, yeah, the current on the, on the app itself says 233.7 amps. So the battery knows it's over 200 amps right now and it's not shutting off it's been 35 seconds the temperatures are already at 108 on the BMS temperatures are now up to 113 and it just turned off on the app it says discharge MOSFETs are off and there is a warning on the app that says warning over current protection so it does do overcurrent protection, but it looks like it will run it for 60 seconds, not five. Okay, so our next test is to see if this Power Eurus battery can power my ShopSmith. Now, this ShopSmith is a 1960s machine that right now is set up as a drill press, but it can do a bunch of, a bunch of items. It can be a drill press, it can be uh, a table saw, it can be a sander, it's all sorts of stuff, but it pulls 400 amps when it starts up. So we're gonna see if this battery can do it. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Nice. I honestly didn't think it would. I'm gonna go ahead and put a clamp meter on and try to measure out the max amperage that it pulled. And the max amperage that it displayed is 305.2 amps. So less than the 400 that it's calculated before, but still well over that 200 max amp that it says that it can do. Okay, well, it passed all the amperage tests. It does say that it will do a max discharge current of 200 amps for five seconds, but we found out that it will actually do it for 60 seconds which still 60 seconds I'm fine with because the internal temperature only got up to 117 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is still respectable. I just wish that they would actually market it correctly. Now, the last thing I wanna do is that in the documentation, it does say that it has low temperature charging protection. I'm not gonna tear this battery down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and throw it in my deep freezer until uh, probably for the next 36 hours and then I will pull it out and what I'll do is I'll open up the app and I will see if the charging MOSFET switch is turned off. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it in my freezer and I'll see you in a few days. Okay, well this Power Eurus battery has been in my deep freezer for 36 hours. So let's go ahead and pull it out, take it to the bench and see if we can charge it. 
All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check the voltage to see if it even shows voltage at the terminals. And it does show 12.7. Next, let's open up the app and see if we can connect to it via the app. I don't see it on my list anywhere. That's kind of unfortunate. I was really hoping to be able to actually see if the MOSFETs on the BMS were shut off due to cold temperature protection. So the next thing we can do is just plug it in a charger and see if it starts charging. Okay, I've got this charger set to uh, five amps. Let's go ahead and see if it will start charging this battery. All right, nothing. So the cold temperature charging protection does work on this Power US battery. Okay, so what do I think of the Power US LiPo 4 12 volt 100 amp hour battery? You know, this thing checks all of my boxes off. I don't really see anything wrong with it. Uh, it gave us over 100 amp hours of capacity. It passed all of my high amperage testing. Uh, I was able to run 111 amps for over five minutes with no problem. Um, I was able to actually power 226 amps. Actually, I think it was 240 amps. Anyway, I was able to, pa I was able to power over 200 amps, which it says it can only do for five seconds. I was actually able to do it for a minute before the battery shut off due to high amperage protection. So I wish they would either adjust it down to five seconds like they want, or adjust it, uh, adjust the labeling on the battery to, to say that it's for 60 seconds and not five. Also, the battery does have low temperature charging protection. I had it in my deep freezer for 36 hours and now it will not charge up even though it still has 12.7 volts at the terminals. I guess the only downside with this battery is that it's a bit pricey. Uh, right now on their website, it does sell for $340. Um, you can get batteries of the same capacity for $100 less, but what you're not getting is the possibility of Bluetooth, uh, the, the low temperature charging protection, uh, making sure that high amperage protection actually works and the build quality. Uh, I did not tear this battery apart, but I will put a link in my description for uh, Lithium Solar who does do a great teardown of this battery and he does show that it is of impeccable quality on the inside. So if you have any questions about the Power Eurus 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, please leave them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.